Well, aloha, everybody, and welcome to Hawaii Together on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. I'm Kili'i Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute. Well, is your pocketbook getting more and more empty? The cost of everything in Hawaii is going up, and if you live in the city and county of Honolulu, on the island of Oahu, the cost of government is going up. We're in the midst of a coronavirus pandemic crisis response right now, and that's driving costs up. In addition to that, prior to the coronavirus crisis, our cost of government was going up. This is not to mention, of course, the cost of the Honolulu Rail Project. Well, if you're a lawmaker in Honolulu, you're tempted to look at the taxpayers to solve the problem of rising costs. And uh, so on their minds now is the issue of whether or not taxes are going to rise in Honolulu in this coming fall. I've got an expert today who's a dear friend of the Grassroot Institute who, who will give us some answers to this. He probably is the most uh, well-versed analyst of the tax situation in Honolulu and Hawaii, my good friend Tom Yamachika, president of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. But before I bring him on, uh, I just want to say I appreciate the work that he does. It's tremendous work informing lawmakers as well as the general public. Tom, thanks for being with us today. I appreciate you joining us on Hawaii Together. Oh, and thanks for having me on the show. Um, we've got uh... There's a lot of interesting things to talk about today. Well, absolutely. But before we do, I'd like you just to take a moment to let our audience know a little bit about the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. Uh, sure. We're a um, taxpayer watchdog organization. Uh, we follow mostly uh, state legislation as it's going through the process. Uh, but we also get involved uh, to a lesser extent on city or county enactments. Uh, as long as it has something to do with tax or public finance, <clears throat> we can be on it. <laughs> right. And uh, we're just proud to say that Tom Yamachika is a great partner of ours at the Grassroot Institute of Hawaii. And together we work on tax issues here in the state and in the city and county. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, the Honolulu City County uh, City Council is considering adding a new tier to its property tax structure. And that's going to bring into question whether or not it's a good idea to tax the rich. I'm going to ask Tom a little bit about that later on. At the same time, the county is going to decide whether to adopt a newly allowed county level transient accommodation tax. And that would be up to three percentage points above the existing uh, state tax or TAT tax, which is currently 10.25%. That's a huge increase. Now, is the city and county going to go for the entire 3% or just part of it? We'll hear from Tom a little bit about that. And should the over budget and behind the schedule, behind schedule Honolulu rapid uh, tra transit project, the rail, get a portion of the revenues? That's a hot issue as well. Well, I'm so glad Tom is here because I'm going to throw him some key, key questions that will help illuminate where we are in terms of taxes. Ready to go, Tom? Oh, sure. <laughs> well, here, let, let me throw this out to you. you. You know, earlier in the year, the state legislature also considered multiple tax hikes, and we worked hard to stop some of those. And, and that was despite the fact that increasing taxes during a recession is generally not a good idea. Now the city council is looking at a few tax proposals. Uh, one of them, Bill 20, would rework the property tax tier system. C can you explain what that would mean for Honolulu homeowners? Sure. Um, <clears throat> oh, what what uh, you mean by a tier system uh, is that for certain classes of property, um, there are bands like the income tax, where the if you uh, have property up to a certain amount of value, then you get a certain tax rate. If you exceed that band and go into another band, so right now we have two bands, um, then you go into another tax rate. So right now what we've got in Honolulu is something called residential A. And what residential A is, is if um, you have a property uh, that's residential but is not uh, eligible for the home exemption and it's valued at a million dollars or more, you get a, a higher rate called residential A. And that that's where the tier structure comes in because uh, the current rate for residential uh, is three dollars and fifty cents per thousand, so you know point um, point three five percent. Residential A is four dollars and fifty cents per thousand. 
uh, for the first a million dollars, but if it's more than a million dollars, uh, you go up to ten dollars and fifty cents per thousand. Well, that's something. You know, Bill Twenty, which they're considering, would add a, a new tier of taxation for property that is valued over five million dollars. Who in who would this really affect ultimately in the new tax structure? Well, at this point, we really don't know because. Um, there there aren't numbers attached to the new rates. Uh, that's something that's set annually by, uh, you know, the budget ordinance. So uh, it just kind of gives the uh, city council more wiggle room to, uh, you know, to, to give, you know, very high tax rates to uh, the most valuable uh, uh, tracts of property. Now, uh, I, what I wanted to mention is that uh, we're not the first county to try this. Uh, the, big, the Big Islanders already have two tiers. Uh, Kauai doesn't. Maui has three. So they already have uh, what is proposed in Bill 20. So <clears throat> they not only have uh, three tiers for owner uh, non-owner occupied like residential A, they have three tiers for owner occupied. And they have three tiers for short-term rental, which is a different classification and one that's uh, taxed much more heavily at that. What is their experience with this? Has this been ultimately beneficial to the taxpayers? Has it been beneficial to the counties? Uh, I, I think the experience is that the counties uh, have gotten some more money out of it. So uh, obviously they're not complaining. But... Uh, uh, over and above that, I really don't. I really don't know. Well, back to Honolulu. Bill Twenty also raises the limit for properties that fit under our Tier A, from a million dollars to one point three million dollars. Now, is this a warranted tax increase, or is this overdue? Well, um, you know, I, I think uh, it's good to move the thresholds every once in a while to keep pace with inflation. Um, do you think it should be greater, Tom? Is 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 it enough? Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, that's that's kind of more of a policy and economic decision. The, uh, the you know the, the part that I'm worried about, and and you know it, it kind of dovetails with another question that you have. Maybe we got to go go to that now. And that is, what happens when you, uh, you know, put the screws to the rich too much? And, and sure. the answer, and the answer basically is. Uh, they got on a plane. Okay, there, there's a, uh, there is not only anecdotal evidence saying this, but the, but there's also empirical evidence. Uh, there was a study that came out in 2019 uh, by a trio of economists, and what they tried to do is they tried to quantify the movements of the uh, the Forbes 400, which is the you know the 400 most wealthy people in the United States. Okay, um, through you know various permutations of estate tax, uh, they were you know primarily uh, looking at estate tax um, uh, because that's you know uh, a, a tax that hits the wealthy and tries to hit the wealthy exclusively. Uh, and what they found, kind of surprisingly, is that uh, if you add an estate tax to most of the states, uh, you gain revenue. But if you add it to a few of them, they'll actually lose money because of effects caused by these these wealthy people saying, well, I've had it, uh, I'm moving out. And, and when they move out, uh, they take with them income tax and sales tax because because they're not in the state to spend you know, money on goods and services anymore. They're, they're someplace else. And guess what? Hawaii was one of, was one of the states that that was uh, past the inflection point. We we would lose money if we uh, added an estate tax. That's what they found. So my point for for that is uh, that there is a point at which you squeeze. These people too hard, and they say, 
heck with this, I'm out of here. So what you're saying, Tom, is that if we create a new tier of taxation for high valued property, uh, claiming that we'll only be taxing the rich in order to help the poor, that that's actually counterproductive. Uh, we actually are going to be killing the goose that lays the golden egg, so to speak. Speak. We're going to be sending away the very tax base that we're looking to in order to provide taxation. Yeah, no, that there's 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 definitely I mean, a risk taxes. of that. I mean, it, it, all of this, of course, is you know predictive science. It's you know uh, whose crystal ball is better, um, but there is a risk. And that's well, that's all I'm saying. There's a risk that this is going to happen, that, sure. that you're going to that you're going to shoot the golden goose, um, and you know the goose will fly somewhere else, uh, and and what do you have left? That's well, that's kind of the problem. You know what concerns me is that many policymakers and many individuals in the public are are not necessarily looking at this from the empirical side, from the data side, which you talk about. They're looking at it from the ideology side. In, in terms of what seems to be the right moral value to follow. The, the rich are rich. They already have their money. We have, got, we have so many poor here. We need to be Robin Hood, take from the rich and, and give to the poor. And, and so you, you have strong public sentiment sometimes for this kind of policy. Uh, what, what are your thoughts about that when it enters the public policy realm? Well, um, you know, policy is one thing. Uh, but, you know, people have to be realistic. Um, you know, if there is a risk that we're actually going to lose money by doing this, uh, I, I don't want us to be the, you know, the, the state that finds out this theory is true. Uh, because you do, you do that and you learn a lesson the hard way. I, 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 don't, I don't want us to be, you know, in that position because, you know, the, the rest of us poor guys who, you know, have to bear the, uh, you know, the brunt of the government services, the, you know, the cost of the government services, you know, taxpayers like you and me um, are, are going to wind up eating it if, uh, if, if there's any miscalculation that's, that's done by the legislature or, or other lawmakers on that score. Let's narrow down a bit uh, in terms of a heavily progressive tax structure. What is that impact upon businesses and, and the potential for businesses uh, owned by small business owners to leave the state? Um, I, uh, yeah, I think that's one of the variables that was factored into the study. Um, most of these uh, so-called rich people uh, aren't just lying around, uh, you, know, you know, sitting on a pile of money day after day. Uh, they, they have done something to get it. A lot of them are entrepreneurs. A lot of them run businesses. Uh, and if they leave the state, um, parts of parts of the business are going to go with them, naturally. One of the interesting things I've uh, noted in numerous conversations uh, since both the state and the counties have been considering increasing the taxing of the rich um, is, is this phenomenon. There are wealthy people who love Hawaii, who consider Hawaii their home, but who own more than one home. They may ho own a home in Hawaii, and also in Nevada. And they are looking at strategies for moving their capital and their businesses out of Hawaii, while being able to find ways to spend a maximum number of days here in their quote unquote second home. What are your thoughts about that and, and that's, that impact on our economy? Well, I mean, we know that uh, people are doing this. Uh, we've seen instances of this. Uh, Nevada is a, um, a very attractive destination because it has no personal income tax. They they make enough off of gaming revenues so that uh, uh, they have done that for their citizens and uh, and they've they've attracted a few from here. Uh, so the uh, the danger is real. Uh, we have seen instances of it, and the the question is how you know to what degree is it going to happen? I mean, uh, you know some people. Uh, and 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 this this is the part that's very hard to quantify. Are going to say, oh, you know, I, I love Hawaii. I was born and raised here. I'm not going to leave no matter what, even if they tax me to death. Um, but uh, uh, more of more of them won't. I mean, they they, they won't have that much um, 
inelasticity, as the economists say. Very good. Well, well, Tom, we're going to take a quick break now. And when we come back, I'm going to ask you a bit about the county TAT uh, increase, which could be as much as 3%. But before that, uh, let me mention to our viewers that we have a project at the Grassroot Institute called Why We Left Hawaii. Story after story of individuals, businesses, uh, and others who have left Hawaii for some of the reasons we talked about today. And you can access those stories at grassrootinstitute.org. Uh, don't go away. We'll be right back on Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Together. I'm Keili'i Akina. Stay right there. Ewan, host of Hawaii, the state of clean energy on Think Tech Hawaii. Hawaii, the state of clean energy, is about following the many clean energy initiatives in Hawaii. Hawaii, the state of clean energy, appears weekly on Think Tech Hawaii at 4 p.m. on Wednesdays. Thank you so much for watching our show. We'll see you then. Aloha. Welcome back and thanks for staying around. I'm Kili'i Akina and you're watching Hawaii Together on Think Tech Hawaii. My guest today is Tom Yamachika and we're talking about potential tax increases for Honolulu County and also for the, the neighbor islands. You know, uh, Tom, uh, another new potential tax is the county transient accommodation tax. And that could be adding up to 3% uh, to the tax burden. Uh, Many critics have pointed out that if you combine that this, the existing state transient accommodation tax with it, it will give Hawaii the highest tourism taxes in the country. What are your thoughts about that, and what would the impact be? Well, sure. Not only that, but uh, you're 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 perhaps maybe forgetting one thing. If you're going to stay at a uh, at a hotel here, you know, if you're a local, if you're a tourist, whatever. Uh, you have you're going to have three things to worry about. One is the state TAT, uh, which is ten and a quarter percent. And after this past legislative session's veto override, the state's going to keep all of it. Whereas before they were they were giving a uh, 103 million every year to the counties. Second, there's the county tax, which was just authorized by this new with this new legislation. Uh, a lot of the counties are still figuring out what to do and, and how to how to go about doing it. And third is we have this ubiquitous tax called the general excise tax. That applies to hotel rooms too. There you go. That was the third shoe I forgot about. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 somebody who is staying in a hotel is going to find lots of tax on the bill because we have ten and a quarter percent plus four point seven plus another possible three. So that's a lot of tax. Close to, it's close to 20%. Um, and uh, whether that's going to affect demand, I mean, it probably will. Uh, we just don't know how much. Right now, uh, the economy has been bouncing back uh, after the, uh, you know, the, the, the drop in uh, COVID-19 cases around the world. But now the Delta variant is kind of getting in there and causing the cases to rise again. So our governor goes up on on the world stage and says you know tourists stay away uh, please um we don't want you uh at least for the time being right and uh i'd love to chat a little bit more about that subject but that's for, for another day in terms of the government government's role in uh, with regard to tourism but just going back to the point you're making at, at the heavy rise in taxation of tourists even, let me throw this out to you, even if that does not curtail tourists coming to Hawaii, 
In what way may it curtail their spending behaviors in stores, restaurants, and so ABC stores, and so forth throughout the islands? Well, I mean, if they're if they're not here, they're not spending money. Right, so, but if, if, for those who do come, how does the increase in taxes affect their spending and behaviors? Well, well, you know, like I said, it's, this is a transient accommodations tax only, so uh, it may affect the length of their stay. And if it affects the length of their stay, it depends. I mean, it'll affect how much money they're spending here. Right, and, and this is where I, I like to think about the ripple effect in, in terms of money that goes to, that doesn't go to stores, doesn't go to employees, doesn't get on the table, and so forth. And so we have this residual impact upon the economy and the impact upon the, the consumer here, here in Hawaii. Now, um, should we be concerned, Tom, that there might be a, another transient accommodations tax this term or an increase beyond what we've t uh, we're aware of? We, we've, we've hit the thing a lot already. I mean, uh, you got to remember this was a, this was a five percent tax when it was originally enacted. Uh, now it's 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 more than double, uh, and it's was supposed to be temporary. It was supposed to uh, fund the convention center and then drop off soon after that. Uh, but uh, but lawmakers kind of liked having the money around, so uh, it got uh, it got extended and extended and extended, and and then uh, people found more uses for it. So. Uh, more earmarks were put on it, and uh, you know it, it. It kept looking like a Christmas tree because there were so many ornaments saying, you know, this money goes here, this money goes there, um, and uh, it, it was just a, kind of a little budget uh, in, onto itself. You know, as you you say that, uh, it comes to mind that. There appears to be quite co a bit of competition for the revenues from the county TAT. Uh, in particular, the Honolulu Rail is hoping to lay claim to the TAT revenues to overcome their budget shortfalls. Uh, do you think the rail should get a slice of the TAT? Uh, well, I, I I don't know uh, if they should or not, but the, the but I think the the practical fact is they're going to. Okay, um, it, it's a it's a cost of Honolulu County government. And if we can't get the feds on board, if we can't get the state on board to bail, you know, to to bail out more of it, uh, guess who's left? Uh, the 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 county. And um, guess what? Governments don't pay taxes. They impose taxes, but they don't pay taxes. So guess who? Guess who comes up uh, footing the bill? The taxpayers. That's all of us. And um, you know, th there there are so many uh, different. Uh, ways and devices that the government takes our money. Uh, this is just one of them, but uh, it just keeps on going and going and going. Let's go back to the GET and in particular, the GET surcharge set aside that already goes to rail. Well, what do you think is going to happen there? Uh, it's going to stay in place. I mean, there's there's been no, um, you know, movement to you know, kill that off. Um, you know the the um, situation by which you know the county's got control of the three percent uh, surcharge. I I I think was a uh, you know a travesty in more ways than one. Um, not not only because it was kind of foisted upon the the counties at the last minute, uh, but it's 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 very different from the other taxes, uh, the state taxes that the counties are administering because uh, the counties didn't want to get the authority for 3%. They opposed it. Um, but uh, but they got it anyway. And uh, worse than that, it came with uh, no assistance whatsoever from the state. And, and, and let, me, let me explain what, what that is. You know, for the uh, county surcharge on the GET, the state collects the GET. And they collect the surcharge on top of it. Uh, so the county, the county doesn't have to work, right? The state just writes them a check. Uh, when coming up with this 3% surcharge bill, lawmakers deleted all those provisions. So, so basically, they get the opportunity to impose up to a 3% TAT on their own, but they have to come up with all the infrastructure to, to do it. So they got to they gotta hire their tax collectors. They have to train them. They have to you know, get them out in the field. Um, 
uh, something that uh, you know the governor and several uh, uh, county councils said was like terribly inefficient, which which it is, uh, but that's what they got. You know, we're, we're winding down now, Tom. Um, what, what what do you think the TAT revenues really should be used for now that they're available? Uh, would one of those usages be to curtail some of the externalities affecting the tourism industry? Well, yeah, that's that's kind of what it was originally intended for. Uh, but, uh, but let's be real. Um, taxes go into a, a, a county government. Um, and they're kind of mixed with everything else. So we really have no control over, you know, um, uh, the, um, or we really should have no control over what a particular dollar is collected by a particular tax is used for. It's all, you know, part of one big melting pot. Um, and of course, it's then the, uh, the legislature or the county council's responsibility to make sure that the money is used wisely. And, um, uh, there was there were indications that at least for the Honolulu Rail project, uh, uh, some of these financial controls were avoided uh, earlier on in the process, and now there's kind of more structure around it to make sure that uh, there is there is more transparency and accountability, which I think is good. Last thought before I let you go: um, How do you think Honolulu should handle the county TAT issue? Any good word of advice? Well, uh, like I said, they sh they should um, you know uh, keep the whole picture in mind. Uh, it's it was once uh, observed um, you know by by some you know wise person in Britain uh, that the art of taxation is like plucking a goose. Uh, you wanted to maximize the number of feathers you get uh, and minimize the hissing uh, and the you know and, and the goose flying away as well. So. Uh, that's really what this science is all about. It's it's a you know kind of treading a delicate balance. Um, so uh, we need to wish the uh, the government's good luck in their endeavors because uh, they're going to need it. Thanks, uh, Tom. This has been great insight you provided today. Appreciate your work at the Tax Foundation of Hawaii, and thank you for being with us here at the Grassroot Institute on today's Hawaii Together on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. Appreciate it. Much aloha to you, Tom, and to our viewers.